Hello, 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 everyone. How are you doing? Welcome to our live stream. And we will be, you know, having this live stream. Um, we'll be having a live interview with Anjali Wilschmidt in a little bit. And I just want to introduce myself for the moment. Wait, let me check. Okay. So my name is... Patricia, and I'm a student success coach here at Learn to Draw Manga. Oh, by the way, can you guys hear me in the comment section? Can you please comment? We can hear you. Yeah, so I'll know that you can hear me, that the audio is good, and so on and so forth. So Ronald um, is actually commenting, watching from the Philippines. Ooh, hello, Ronald. Hello, my fellow Filipino. Okay, so... You know, I'm so excited for this live, guys, because, you know, as you know from our event page and also the invites that we sent out, Anjali, wa uh, Anjali has this very amazing, heartwarming story that, you know, reminds you of those kinds of anime or manga that, you know, has that genre called Slice of Life. And, you know, as you can see on your screen, you already know that Anjali went from a 10-year art hiatus to finally opening up her own art merch business. So that is amazing in itself. So despite all the setbacks, discouragements, and very and a very, very busy schedule, you know, Anjali was able to go through this and was able to progress her art and eventually, you know, open up her own art merch business. So can I ask the people here? Are you, uh, are some of the people here classmates of Anjali? Because I know, like, the classmates of Anjali are very supportive. Like, the last time that I posted something about the event, like, every there was, like, 10 seconds yet. And they were already reacting to it and commenting to it. Uh, well, anyway, let me read. Um, Creative Fat, Sediment Artists, and Goof Pie said that, they can hear me so that's very good to hear i hope that you know you enjoy this live stream as well by the way guys are you new to this live or have you been following us for a long time already or maybe you're a student can you please comment in the comment section if you are so Momoka says present, Creative Pet says present. Hello. Hello, my dear students. I'm so glad that you are present right now. So, you know, before we actually invite in Anjali, can you guys please invite other friends, you know, your families, your brother, your sister, your mother, your uncles, your grandma and grandpas that you know like anime and manga or you know they also love to create um art as well and you know if you want a quick tip like if you're waiting for that right time to talk to your crush you can actually just use this opportunity to do so like copy the youtube link above and then just send it to him and then that'll be your initial conversation <laughs> So yeah. So Nicole David says, this is my second time attending your live video. Oh, that's so great, Nicole. And she's actually on Facebook. Nicole, are you in Artillery um, Facebook page or are you in the Learn to Draw Manga Facebook page? So Mia Yasmin says, Gambate Anjali. Yeah. I believe that this is a classmate of Anjali or maybe a friend of hers. Yeah, I can see Anjali right now. She's just, you know, smiling and she's having a fun time looking at your comments. And then Jennifer M, which is, you know, has been a long time viewer of ours, says, Hello, hello, Jennifer. How are you doing? And then Victor Francis says, Go, Kea. Yes. And actually, we have a little bit of a surprise later, but yeah um go wait for that a little bit more and then main vision says hello nicole david says yes ma'am she's from artillery page in facebook okay so guys um who are new viewers here i just want to know because we actually invited some of you know 
some of the people in our Instagram and I want to know if they are here as well. So Miss Ann says, hi everyone. Good luck, Pat and Kaya. Yes, thank you, Miss Ann. I'm absorbing all the good luck that you're sending out. Good vibes and good manifestations. Pon Mary says, proud of you, Anjali. Yeah, honestly, we're all proud of Anjali. And Fork Roll says, I'm a new viewer. Hi, Fork Rolls. How are you doing? Welcome to our live stream. Let me give you a big virtual warm hug. Okay. So guys, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go ahead and, you know, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get the latest updates on our live interviews like this one, our live critiquings, our live master classes, as well as the different uh, free lessons that we have in Learn to Draw Manga YouTube channel. And of course, if you want to be the first one to get updated on those things, go ahead and click the bell icon also in our YouTube channel. So yeah. And now I'm not going to let you guys wait a little bit more. So I'll just be asking a quick question to all of you. So who here has ever been discouraged to pursue their art dreams? Like, for example, someone told you one time that you don't really have talent for drawing. Or like someone comments on your artwork saying that it's ugly or no, it's not even that good. Or maybe, you know, a family member or someone close to you has discouraged you to pursue the arts and they tell you something like, don't pursue the art because don't pursue the arts because you're not gonna earn money on that. Like you're just gonna starve. You're not gonna get it. You're not gonna get a job, or you're not gonna live a very successful life. Or you know, maybe the circumstances that has led you to be discouraged are something like um, your job um, not letting you have like. A little bit of free time to do anything like you're always busy you're always tired and you're always exhausted so who here has experienced that who here has been discouraged to pursue their art dreams so let me just read some of the comments here nicole david says me oh nicole david go ahead and share what you know what happened to you how were you discouraged and jennifer m raised her hand says yeah she she was you know discouraged too she felt that experience and experienced that too brenna says me kiara says i'm the opposite they are telling me to pursue it but i'm nervous why are you nervous kiara i believe that you know as long as you practice and as long as you're following the right time there's nothing to be nervous about and then jc says Akopo. So to the people who, you know, says that it's them, you know, or is saying or is there or raising their hands, can you tell me, you know, what event or what caused you to be discouraged, for example? And also do add, you know, um, have you um, because of these discouragements, have you stopped doing art or, you know, have stopped practicing your art because yeah you feel discouraged you feel sad you feel a bit depressed because of all those things happening so goofy says when i show my art to my friend they just looked at it and said nothing oh my goodness i don't even know if that's worse or maybe it's the same but you know when people say nothing to your like it doesn't feel good or translate well to mean anything but you know i feel for you goof by it's okay to feel like that it's okay to experience like that because honestly i've experienced these things as well you know i felt discouraged so many artists that i've talked to you know um during this past few weeks have also felt discouraged as well and you know um i'm not gonna go far anymore even angelique you know, the one we're interviewing right now has also felt discouraged as well. So 
So Nicole says, I stopped doing art because of depression. Oh my goodness. I feel so sad for that. I hope you're doing okay now, Nicole. And I hope, you know, you go pursue art again. And I bet you get the help you need and the support that you need. Mia says, hand pink waving. Ooh. I remember the emoji, but honestly, like I can't see the emoji right now. Poor Girl says, I've been discouraged by my peers being able to sell their anime art while we were still in high school. So I stopped for a long time. How long did you stop, Poor Girls? Nicole David, Nicole David says, thank you, ma'am fat. Oh my God, the ma'am makes me feel so old. But thank you very much, Nicole. Or rather, I'd say, you know, you're welcome very much. Nicole. So JC says, I was told by my family that it isn't a good source of stable income. Honestly, a lot of families are like that, um, especially for, you know, Asian families. Like they're going to say that you're supposed to pursue the sciences rather than the arts. So Queen says, I think my past discouragement was mostly from monetization and not being able to make money out of art but that is in fact not true you can sell anything if you're smart enough that is true queen you can sell anything if you put in the work and if you're smart enough to do the work Porkle says around three years don't do stuff for around three years that is so sad to hear so and then main vision said me i was discouraged when i was in high school because didao kikita jan have been pursuing art since the pandemic though. so it's good to hear that you're pursuing art again and i'm so sorry to hear that you know someone discouraged you and said that you can't you're not able to earn you know doing art or pursuing your art dreams so for everyone who has experienced this discouragement before don't worry guys as i've said before you are not alone i've experienced that as well many artists have experienced that as well so if you want to do something about these feelings or these feelings like you want to progress in your art and you want you know you want these things that have discouraged you before to be stepping stones to your actual success in your in your artworks as well as your you know, possible you know art future in art and you want to be brave enough, like Anjali, to take the leap to pursue your passions. So if you want all those things and you don't want the naysayers to win, you don't want the people to tell you that there's no future in art to win, go ahead and book a call with us using the link in our pinned comments. So can you guys see the link in our pinned comments? Go ahead and click that. So you can take the first step into, you know, progressing with your art. And also, if you want to learn more about, you know, how to work with anime or with pro manga and anime artists, go ahead and stay until the end of the live. So tonight, we will share with you the journey of Angelique, an aspiring anime and manga artist. Okay. So in this live, we're going to talk about, you know, how Anjali was able to overcome a decade long hiatus in art and then how she was able to gain that confidence to open up her own art merch business. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that later. And of course, as I've said before, um, if you want to find out, you know, how you can work with pro Japanese manga and anime artists, please stay until the end. And of course, for our question and answer portion where you can ask Anjali herself, you know, questions that you have in your mind about her struggles, her triumphs and her circumstances, or even questions that you have for me and learn to draw manga, go, um, please stay until the end so that you could have, you know, we could answer all of those questions for you. Okay. So guys, let's. Go ahead and give a big round of applause to our special guest today, Anjali. Let me, before I bring her out, let me see the 
clap emojis. Come on, guys. Let me see your clap emojis to show the warm welcome that, you know, you're presenting to our guest of honor in this live interview right now. So I see Beverly clapping her hands. Victor, Juan Marie, JC, Galera, Gooft, and Christian are clapping their hands. So without further ado, let me use my magic and add and actually, you know, pop up in our screen the one, the only, the only one, Miss Angelie Wilschmidt. Here we go. Hello, Hello good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. How are you doing? <laughs> I am nervous, just like my character, kinda. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Awkward silence. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, your getup is very cute. Who are you um, cosplaying right now as? Uh, I'm cosplaying as Arlan from Hongkai Star Rail, aka the mm -hmm. other Hoyoverse game. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So actually, Mia was commenting, Arlan, heart, 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 heart. And then, <laughs> you know, let me just read yeah. some of the other comments. She's reporting live from her to Space Station. <laughs> yeah, if you look at her background, let me just emphasize the background here. Here we go. If you look at her background right now, she is at a space station. Yeah, she's like doing the business over there. Maybe that's her office station. Already. This is Ireland yeah. station. <laughs> Let's go. Quaint Thank says, you. hello. <laughs> hello. Love the cosplay. Yeah. Yeah, everyone is commenting that they love the cosplay, that it's a nice cosplay. Honestly, the hair looks very good on you. Like, ugh, you you look so amazing. You look so beautiful. Thank you. Oh, wait. Goofy says, I would. You're welcome. <laughs> Goof. Kuru, kuru, kuru. <laughs> kuru, kuru. Yeah, okay. it's, uh, Goofy it's says, uh, from I would... the game. <laughs> Oh, that's why you're making the kru 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 noise. Okay, kru -kru. that'll be our, yeah. you know, our call for this live stream. Kru kru kru. Okay. So Einman says, looks great. And Yuri says, hello, Anjali. Okay. Hello. So let me first start off this interview with this first question. So, Anjali, you know, it's already obvious, or it's a bit obvious that you love anime and manga. But how did it all begin for you? Like, how did your love for anime begin? And how did you start to love drawing anime and manga? Uh, uh, first of all, like, hello to the 90s kids, lol. Uh, my love for anime actually started when I first watched um, Yu Yu Hakusho which was locally known as Ghost Fighter. And from there, I think it's probably a childhood thing, like, you know, uh, watching anime after class. So I continued watching anime through the years, although it was not until I had this Japanese classmate in elementary, wherein I was interested in starting with art. So... Uh, her her art was really nice at that time. I mean, even as a young, even as a kid. So I was like really amazed. And from there, uh, I tried looking up at the local bookstore. Uh, you know, those how to draw manga books. And tried to learn how to draw anime on my own as well. I mean, there were not much uh, online resources back then. So I had to resort to books only. And also looking at uh, manga, yung mga ano, uh, what do you call it? Like yeah. those, those uh, manga How wherein there are a lot, there are a lot of series or rather manga in one thick book. That's where I started. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So let me, uh, let me just read this. I mean, says Yu Yu Hakusho defined a generation. Yeah, for the '90s and '80s kids. Yeah, it true. is true. It is true. So, you know, you said something about, you know, using um, 
how to draw manga books. And yes. then, did you have any particular struggles, even、uh, or when you were using these books, or when you were trying to learn how to draw by yourself?、Uh, I think、uh, more more or less the struggle was like、uh, creating my own character poses. I was really reliant on the books that I tried copying, like what the sample is, or if I'm looking at the manga, I'm trying to copy what the panel or the character is doing. So I,、uh, more or less, my ideas were kind of restricted, in a sense. Yeah. So yeah. So the struggle there was like creating poses that are quote unquote dynamic. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think you know when you're using a reference or a book, like you're, like limited to the the contents of that book. And when we were young, like for example, you know the artworks that we're showing you right now are actual artworks that you know Angeli has done before. So you can already see that she has you know background on drawing. But there were some. Some minor tweaks, actually, that could be done to make it, you know, a little bit more better, per se. So yeah. yeah. But I do remember that art style as well. I love that art style when I was young. <laughs> I used to play a lot of games with that art style. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> like、uh, I find it funny when I look at it now. Like、uh, I really was only into. Copying, like I I know where I got those poses from, so yeah.、Mm-hmm. But、uh, in a sense, like it's also nice to look back because you know you you get to see how much you've grown as an artist. True, 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 true. And you know, I already see, or you know, I'm seeing that you're incredibly passionate about drawing. I mean, you tried to learn it by yourself. And there was one time that you said that you actually wanted to pursue, you know, a degree in fine arts. But then when you asked your parents about it, they they said no. And no, they, yeah, <laughs> no, 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 no. And they pushed you to to choose a more practical course. So how was、yes. how was that? You know, event for you. Like, how did you feel, or how did you react to that? Of course,、um, the first in, in reaction would be like, "Oh my God, that's so sad. I won't be able to take the course that I wanted to take." And、mm-hmm. and、uh, of course, it would it at first it was like hard to accept. But of course, I didn't have money. I didn't have. I wasn't. I didn't have the means to pay for my tuition fee. So. All I could do was just follow, follow orders. <laughs> okay, that sounded weird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry.、Um, yeah, follow I, orders yeah. in a sense, and follow follow orders yeah, and take commerce. <laughs> okay, so you know, honestly, with when you're young and you don't have the money, as you said. You're just forced、yeah. to go along with the wishes of the older people, like your parents. So, even though it's your passion, you're like, "Well, I, I can't pay for the tuition, so might as well just go with, along with what they want for me right now." What、uh, What course did you end up taking, by the way? I'm just a bit curious. Business administration major in management. <laughs> oh. A far cry from fine arts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least, <laughs> yeah. But, but you, you know, thankfully, come true in a way. So, despite you know, cer- certain circumstances, I guess you were still able to pursue the thing that you love. So that's a good thing. I mean, Amy even... says, "Oh, sorry. Okay, go ahead. Sorry." <laughs> Okay, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I was actually even if I was taking the course, I was still making art on the side. Because、um, as students, you know, you have a bit more free time aside from studies. 
Yeah. So you were taking art on the side. Like, what did you do um, with the art? Like, did you have commission artworks already by that time? Or, you know, you just do it randomly when you feel like it? Uh, actually, both. Uh, I did a lot of personal art and I uploaded it to DeviantArt, which I would rather not mention <laughs> because, yeah. yeah. Thing, it's a thing of the past, but yeah. Uh, uh, I was also taking commissions, ironically. Uh, I'm not sure if people know that online game called Gaia Online. Uh, I was doing art commissions there, although I get paid in game currency rather than real money. Yeah, at least, you know, you were able to earn in a way using your art back then. And... Mm. I think maybe that's a that's like a mirror to the future already because you know you were selling your art a bit back then and now you're basically directly selling your art already. So that's a little bit of a mirror right there. So yes, but you know I wasn't aware I wasn't aware that it would you know lead to this because I just did art back then as a hobby. And I really didn't think I would make money from it considering that, you know, quote unquote, there is no money in art. That's why you should take commerce instead. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's like an example, like a direct example that that statement regarding you can't do or you can't earn money when you do art. It's completely wrong. Like, honestly, it depends on what you do and how you do it in any single circumstance honestly so if you want to do art and you want to earn money with it you have to be smart and also even in other courses in other things if you want to earn money on it you have to be smart as well so um it art and earning money aren't like inversely proportional so they aren't you know opposite from each other like you just have to make a way right angeli yes that's true <laughs> i mean you can't yeah. really wait for the for the uh what's the term i forgot the term i'm sorry uh you can't really wait for opportunity to come knocking at your door i mean it happens sometimes but uh from what i have gathered in my experience you, sometimes you have to pave the way yourself uh, because yeah. I have experienced like trying to make time for art and I was like I, I want a free day to open up so I could make art but given that we all have to you know do adulting so I have mm -hmm. to change my mindset and say that uh, I have to make time if I really want this mm -hmm. So actually, Ayn Means uh, said something really good here. Art makes our world worth living. That's so mm. true. Honestly, like, you know, games, like artworks in games or artworks in animation, like, gives you stories that motivate you to, you know, pursue your dreams or, like, persevere certain circumstances. And... um. Sometimes, you know, when you're in a very lonely home, um, it's like an escape way for you from reality, right? True. And then, yeah. So, uh, were you able to, you know, experience that as well when, you know, uh, when art was like an escape way for you or, you know, it just made you happy a bit despite, yes. you know, the very stressful times? Yeah. Yes, very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, you said something about adulting. So, is that, you know, synonymous or related to the 10-year hiatus that you had with art? Because, you know, when you're adulting, you're really busy all the time. Like, you don't even have time to breathe. Like, was that, you know, one of the reasons why it took you a long time to pursue art again yes actually it's also a, a more or less a mix of adulting and also 
trying out other hobbies. Uh, actually, uh, looking back, I can't believe I didn't even consider art back then when I had, you know, a bit of free time. I ended up mm -hmm. with other hobbies that is not really art related, although I admit um, cosplay is also an art in itself. Uh, yeah. while, while I was, uh, well, adulting, I also tapped into cosplay and it also helped me get that, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, arrest. Uh, arrest from the adulting world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah it was like um, a breath of fresh air from being too stressed all the time right yes. yeah that's that's what I got from <laughs> what you said so you know uh, you had that art hiatus so what got you out of that funk like what got you out of that art uh, art block that lasted for a decade uh how did i get back to art after 10 years yeah uh it may be funny to hear or it's actually weird to hear but uh I'll, I, i'm just being honest uh what made me get back into art was burnout from streaming <laughs> so yeah. uh it's a it's a like uh i i would like to think of it that things happen for a reason because if it weren't for that uh, i won't be this i won't be able to discover artillery because mm -hmm. uh, i think when i was on stream break uh, it was that time i encountered the master class for the anime and manga drawing course and yeah. it made me realize that time like art was always there why didn't i well okay. notice it so that's that's like the rest is history. Yeah. Yeah. So it was the master class that got you to join. Like what uh who is, you know, who is teaching then or what were they teaching about that really intrigued you? Uh the things that I still have not improved on, mainly drawing hands. Oh my goodness. Who here can relate to, you know, the difficulty of drawing hands? Honestly, drawing it's like hands. it's like the yeah. It's like the Achilles heel of so many 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 artists. Like personally, I also have, you know, difficulty with dealing with hands. Yes. So Adley Young says me, yeah. You know that feeling so, you know, of drawing hands you, uh, and you put the character's hands in their pocket so you can save yourself from having to draw them? Yes, yes exactly. Or one of the things that I did was I would draw very long sleeves so, you know, I don't have to draw yes. the hands. Yes. And, you know, cover, cover things. Uh, like, for example, if they had a fan, you know, I would cover this whole thing with a fan. <laughs> Aidman says drawing hands and the draw drawing the other eye just the worst yeah honestly you know it's a very 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 serious struggle for most artists so um what was it like you know to watch the mentors at work when you were doing the course or during the course honestly uh Personally, I found it amazing because uh, it's kind of hard to find a community, like a solid community where you can actually share your insights and also share inspiration. Mm -hmm. and, and to think that the mentors are also very nice and they know how to help the students improve without sounding like, uh, what's the term, condescending. Like, uh, it, yeah. they know how to tell you what's wrong with your art. At the same time, they encourage you to do better. Yeah. Like, some of the students that, you know, I also help, you know, uh, coach would say that um, they really feel the passion with the mentors. Like, they would ask the mentors sometimes, you know, outside the class, you know, what could they use or what should they what should they do with their artworks and 
they also reply a lot. So yeah, you could really feel the support of the mentors, like the passion of the mentors. Do you have any uh, specific, you know, moment that really highlighted your stay here in the course or, you know, during the course? Here at I Learn think, to Drama. Uh, I think it was the lesson about uh, color value, was it? Um, coloring a whole art with just one shade of color. Although mm -hmm. I think it was grayscale, but I remember doing my artwork with a, an orange color theme. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was the most memorable because uh, usually I either draw in only line art or full color. But I haven't really tried coloring in one shade only. Yeah. Wait, is the October 2022 uh, one the orange? Or wait, I no. think it uh, might be it, this one. This one, the one in the middle. Yes, the one in the middle and the November 2022 artwork, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Because that also involves uh, one color palette, which was violet. Mm -hmm. And you were able to, you know, fully utilize it and show different highlights and different ways to, like, make the artwork pop with yes. those colors. It was a really amazing ex experience because when you look at the finished artwork, uh, you, you, you tend to ask yourself, like, wow, I actually did this with just two markers. So yeah. yeah, it was really memorable. Yeah, the like you're just uh you're just going to have that aha moment like, oh, I did this with just yeah. these things. Like usually, you know, I have a hard time with a lot of art materials, but I could just do this with just two art materials. Like that's amazing. <laughs> so, um what is the proudest moment that you've experienced so far, you know, in the uh, course. On, in the course, proudest moment, uh, getting to finish a full illustration, like an illustration wherein I used the full space of the A4 paper because usually I just draw, well, small, a, a small piece of paper. And for, to me, uh, if I ask my younger self, like, are you happy I got to achieve this? And probably my younger self would be like, yes, congrats. Yeah, that's so good to hear. So now, you know, how do you feel about, you know, your progress so far? You know, seeing yourself overcome your struggles and, you know, getting better at art. How is that feeling? Uh, surreal. <laughs> if yeah. that's uh, if that's the right word, like uh, honestly, I still can't believe um, I tried enrolling in this course and reaching this far, like along with classmates who are likewise a huge inspiration and a huge push to me. Who tried? I mean, for aspiring to do better in art and also try to sell my art yeah and i just want to highlight this particular artwork you know this is your character design progress and as you can see you know, it's very thorough and the character design is very good so can you tell us more about it actually uh i used to make Oh, original characters back then but I really didn't uh, what's the quote flesh out the characters it was mostly mm -hmm. based on another old game called Ragnarok online and I, I created characters out, out of our guildmates uh, the characters I designed for this course is uh, actually what I call the second generation of the OCs I created back then. So it's almost like if they had kids, these would be the characters now. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. So, you know, I've actually, you know, noticed for 
about a week now or a few weeks actually that you're very active in posting your art in social media and you know can i ask your secret about being so consistent in posting and improving your art as well uh for being consistent uh, i try to schedule my post although actually admittedly um i haven't scheduled much in instagram lately but uh i try to set up some posts to be uh, posted at the wait that didn't make sense uh, sorry uh, i try to set um set up some posts to be posted at a specific time so even if i won't be making content daily at least there would be something that would be posted on instagram because uh, the main problem i think for us artists is our fight against the algorithm and sometimes mm -hmm. you have to post consistently so you could stay afloat but uh if you try to comply with that uh, it it would probably lead to burnout and that is something i am trying to avoid with regards to art because I already experienced burnout in other hobbies back then. So I'm being careful this time. Yeah. I think, you know, when you're doing something that you're passionate about, you also have to think about resting as well. Like, yes. you can't just be like, I have to do this every day, every day, every day, every second. Like, you have to rest as well so you can appreciate the hard work that you put into your art. Yes. So actually, um, Creative Fat Unicorn was commenting something here that was uh, yes, that was very good. The so, sino artwork. Yeah. So he commented, "I remember that's the first time I attended the class and amazed how how you did draw and color Tino in orange, and it looks great." And I Thank mean, you. also says, even Angelie's handwriting is art. I have to see your handwriting sometimes. Actually, let's go back to the character, you know, character progress. <laughs> yeah. Yes. If you can see the handwriting there, it's very pristine and it's very, you know, illegible. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she's blushing right now. If you can see it on the screen right now, she's literally blushing with Thank all the compliments. Thank you so much. Because uh, honestly, you know, yeah yes go ahead yes, go ahead <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> awkward yeah. online moments um yeah. i actually tried um um writing the character profile using a fountain pen uh it's mm -hmm. actually another hobby of mine that robs me of my wallet mm, the fountain pen because fountain pens are very you know expensive it's uh, but, at first glance it looks expensive but there are actually fountain pens that go for like 50 pesos on shopee it mm -hmm. has actually helped a lot in improving my handwriting over the years so i was also confident to use it for the character profile okay so that's that's a tidbit for all of you guys so if you want to know why um angeli has very amazing beautiful handwriting that's the reason <laughs> so you know right now i i just want to delve into your art business so you have an art business and you know you're selling um artworks that are made by yourself already so when did that all start like take us back to uh... the very beginning to the to deciding uh deciding was uh before my 10 year 10 year uh, hiatus uh, i actually considered uh selling art before like i remember doing a few artworks last i mean i'm not sure if i could mention the the year but it was very old from a very old anime and it was mm -hmm. just sitting in my files over the years and i actually included it um in my lineup for merch although i reduce mm -hmm. the quantity because yeah the anime is old i'm not sure the fandom if is still alive yeah and yeah um like i i i considered 
sorry <laughs> i'm not making sense no, it's okay uh, it's uh okay. i like before the hiatus i considered making art but there wasn't much resources before i mean it's kind of hard to look for a button pin maker or even a keychain maker or a sticker maker without you know uh um, using up a lot of resources and there mm -hmm. were, weren't much references back then but for the art business um i decided around november last year 2022 i decided mm -hmm. uh if if people are doing it why can't i i, I mean rather why am i hesitating yeah yeah that's a good you know it's a good thing to think about like if other people can do it then why can't i do it too like what's yeah. stopping you right yeah that's true so, so Anne is actually saying breathe, breathe angeli okay let's take a deep <laughs> breath first because there Ooh. is like there's the nerves coming in yes. but honestly this is a very you know this is a very fun stream and i really liked you know your insights on things and i also want to know about you know how were you able to um get the capital for you know for starting your business also uh since i decided uh, around november 2022 and most of us have you know the quote unquote christmas bonus in december so i set aside a bit of what i got last december for the capital uh, mm -hmm. uh at first i was like why am i even setting this aside but i uh, on second thought i was like i'll just think of it like saving for an expensive fountain pen because uh yeah. what made me decide also was like if i can spend this much on fountain pens and ink why can't i set aside money for capital for an art business yeah it's a very you know business woman type of thinking and it's a good, good thing honestly wait weird by the sign says i only lose money on xmas okay actually um momoka says fountain pen collection reveal please so oh no <laughs> Yeah, I, actually, it's kind of far from the table, so I will still have to get it if I have to show it on the stream. Yeah, but I think for you know, for her live streams, you can if you follow her on her YouTube channel, on her Twitch, maybe she could do that for you too. So if you're you know wanting to see all of her, all of her fountain pens, you know, follow her, follow her on her um, uh, social media accounts. So, you know, um, since it's a business that you started on your own, do you also do all of it all your, on your own? Like, can you take us to the day-to-day day -day process of, you know, producing these merchandise? Uh, uh, since I only have a printer right now, uh, I usually do the prints on my own. But for the other merchandise, like the button pins and some stickers, because I still don't have a cutting machine. So I rely on suppliers, mm -hmm. like other stores, and, and I send them my art for printing. And then they send the finished product to me. Uh, but uh, considering that the consignment store that I applied for, like they provide you with the shelf, and you have to arrange your merchandise on your own. So I also did the pin backings and the packaging and the barcodes all by mm -hmm. myself and for the art prints uh i didn't want to put my prints out in the open so i also covered them in the plastic packaging to make them safe so i did all that by myself during uh usually during night time after work or rather after work and after errands and when i'm already in my room yeah okay that was like a lot of process and it shows that you're really working hard you know pursuing your dreams in art right now so um was there a time that you know you were really having a hard time with the business that maybe probably um 
forced you to almost stop um was there a time like that that happened uh yes actually uh there was a few months wherein i had zero sales so imagine that the well devastation when you open your email and the store says you have zero sales this month so it was actually discouraging but uh, i also realized that uh your art is not worth i mean your art's worth is not measured by you know the number of followers you have or the number of sales you have uh what matters is that you have already put your art out there and all uh all you could do is uh hope although i i'm hoping as well like uh, there will be someone who can appreciate your art yeah but i do you know like i appreciate what you said regarding you know um just because you're not earning a lot of money for example in one of your artworks for let's say this month it doesn't mean that your artworks are bad or you know they're not uh, as great as you think they are but uh, actually even um if if you guys follow art you know even van gogh was or um yeah even van gogh wasn't really earning that much back then but eventually you know he did get that but it wasn't always you know sunshines and butterflies like earning a lot and lots of money yes. like it has those days too so you know i appreciate that you were able to push through regardless of those circumstances so can you um share to them right now like how they can buy your merchandise uh right now uh, my merchandise is available at the shelves of um the craft central green belt i think it's green belt five if i'm not mistaken uh just look for mm -hmm. a shelf with well i'm not sure if they still have my banner there but you can look for a shelf that has um genshin art prints uh photo cards and button pins I also have stickers for Genshin and Star Rail, although it only features um, the main characters like Ether, Lumine, Stell, and Kylus. So yeah, that's what I have for yeah. now. Uh, hopefully, if I manage to draw more, I will add more items to the shelf. And yeah, that's that's the only store where my art is at. But uh, I also intend to sell at conventions eventually. Uh, just that it's a bit hard to get yeah. in because everyone is applying. But uh, my tentative uh, conventions are, are like um, Cosplay Mania, which is um, September 30, yeah. October 1. And the other one is mm -hmm. um, Anime Fair, which will be in December 1, 2, 3. Yeah. So guys, you know, you already know where you can get her merchandise so go ahead and buy already like buy it all right now <laughs> <laughs> and also you know with, with regards to um finding a booth that you know for cosplay events um i do hope that you get uh you're able to get that soon because you know as you said you've been as you said to me actually a few weeks back or i think a few days back you were trying and trying to uh get into those um cosplay cosplay um yes. events with a booth so hopefully yeah. you know you get into it someday because you know your artworks are really good as well as your products so i think it's just a matter of time already <laughs> Yeah. Yes, thank you. So, uh, uh, as they would say <laughs> in Tagalog, um, kapit lang, laban lang. Uh, just continue. True. Like, uh, don't let, don't let one rejection discourage you, because your art is more, more than that. It's not just, uh, it is not a measure of your art's worth. Like if you get rejected in an art convention or a cosplay convention, what matters is. Although I sound like a broken record already. What matters is that you'll be able to put your art out there. I mean, even if it's not in a convention. But as long as you put it out, like, 
online or at least show your friends or to those people who matter and those people yeah. who, who know how to appreciate someone who is doing art. Yeah. Like it uh what you said, you know, like a uh, certain type of people are going to appreciate what you put out. Like that's certainly true. Like I actually um watched this um video about a violinist who was playing yes. a very amazing I know that piece. Video. Yes. Yeah. If you guys know that video, please comment in the comment section. So th this is a, fa a very famous violinist who was playing in a, um, what do you call that? A train, a train subway station. station. Yeah. 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 And he was playing so good. And he, he was already like a lot of people are paying him hundreds and um, thousands of dollars just to see him play. But when he was in that subway station, like no one paid him mind like no one was yeah. like giving him money or appreciating his art so i think you know sometimes as artists like it's not always going to be um a lot of people who appreciate your art because maybe they don't understand your art in the first place like for example you know if um, if I know the character that Angelie is playing right now, I am able to, you know, uh, appreciate it more. But if I'm not into anime, if I'm not into gaming, I'll. Some people would probably be like, "Why is she wearing that?" Right. Yes, so that's true. Yeah. So you just have to remember, you know, to as you said, hold on, kapit lang, and eventually you're going to, you know achieve your dreams and find people who truly appreciate your art for what it is yeah yes. so <laughs> yeah <laughs> what, what was the i know what was the like sound that we were making earlier that was kuru, in the kuru. game kuru, kuru. Kuru, kuru. <laughs> <laughs> just keep kuru doing just so it's not just keep swimming anymore it's just keep yes. kururuing yes <laughs> yeah oh wait um miss Anne actually uh commented something here my favorite tagalog words malayo pa pero malayo na yeah that's a, yeah that's oh true. my goodness that is so good honestly for a lot of artists here so what that means is so let me translate um um, the destination is still far, but you are already, but you have gone far enough already. So, if you think that um, you're uh, achieving something or achieving the success that you want is still far, like look where you're standing right now. Look how far you've gotten already. So you just need to keep pushing through. Le like keep kororoing, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and you know. <laughs> Kuru, kuru. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. It's gonna be so hard to do this. <laughs> Wait. Let me let me Generally, try. Generally you'll little. just be you'll just keep twirling like Herta who says kuru kuru. Kuru kuru. So keep kuru 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 doing. <laughs> <Okay>. Sorry. <laughs> so <laughs> random. Honestly. I love that. Like, honestly, I'm going to use that in my daily life because, you know, you have to just sometimes, you know, when life gets hard, you have to just laugh and have fun with it and kuru kuru ruing with it. So yes. for this uh, uh, last question, actually, this isn't the last last question, but um, it's uh, the last question related to, you know, your art merch business. So. Do you have any plans or goals for your merch business this coming months or year? Uh, oh, probably year. Although it's like a long shot, but why not? Um, uh, my plans mm -hmm. are mostly no. involve, um, if possible, I of course uh, to make more art for merch. At the same time, also create art for myself because you cannot entirely dedicate your art to just merch because it will probably result in burnout as well so probably merch making and then personal art then merch making uh, my goals probably is 
hopefully to well sell at more conventions and hopefully if i have enough capital because i keep buying fountain pens uh probably expand like probably expand yeah. at another store or another branch for consignment uh, i cannot really open an online store for now because yeah very busy and uh for now my best bet is consignment yeah. and conventions yeah, I do hope, you know, you're able to achieve that, you know, within this year. Because honestly, you were able to um, start selling your merch, um, like progressing in your art and then start selling your merch in just nine months. So, like, it is an endless field of possibilities as long as, you know, you just take that step and you just, um, you're... You're brave enough to take the risk yes. as they say in the business world high risk high reward high risk. yeah <laughs> yes exactly so for now guys um before i tell or if, before i ask um angelie's very last question um i want to see if you guys have any questions for her right now so you know the spotlight was on Angeli for a little bit let me just put it on you so if you have any questions for for Angeli, go ahead and ask them right now or if you have any questions for me go ahead and ask it in the comment section actually there was a question here a while ago so let me just look for that what are your art accounts I want to follow says Kiara Gala uh uh you can follow me on instagram under the name um Hoshi Chino. uh it's kind of hard to spell i'm sorry but i think the link was given in the chat uh yeah. you can follow me there uh on instagram i also have a facebook page but my main account or what i call my main trash bin <laughs> my main trash bin is like instagram yeah so yeah, um, Miss. Uh, so the the team has already, you know, commented it in our Facebook page, in Artillery and Learn to Draw Manga. So go ahead and follow Angeli on her Instagram, Hoshi Chino. So it's spelled H O S H I E C C I N O. Okay. Yes. So let Thank me you. just, yeah. Thank you guys. You know, like support artists like let's support each other and support more artists so Einman actually asked who are your current art inspirations uh current art inspirations uh i i cannot really name just one name because i'm not too sure who is behind the illustrations in genshin impact i mean the ones that they use for the promo material because the art is really pretty and what i would call wallpaper worthy and yeah so i, I will just say like uh, because i can't say just one artist name so probably the artist behind the promo materials for genshin because genshin is like a huge part of my life right now well aside from honkai star rail uh it has helped me a lot over the pandemic so most of my art are inspired from there uh, another inspiration, although I I haven't really looked much at their art, at their recent art. Another inspiration is like Clamp. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I they also were a huge inspiration for me back then, and until now. Yeah. So I yarn. <laughs> yeah. So that answers that. Um, let's uh, see the other questions here. There's a lot, honestly. Yuri asks, what advice can you give if an artist wants to start selling their art? Uh, if, if you want to start selling your art, uh, don't, don't be like me who went in blindly. <laughs> like, uh, ask a lot of questions first. I mean, uh, if you're signing up for consignment, ask the store on how it's done. And also, in a sense, ask yourself, 
if you have the dedication to make it happen because it will not be easy. I mean, regardless if you have a day job or if you're a full-time artist because we tend to like, uh, well, probably it's just me. We tend to like procrastinate. So you have to ask yourself like, can I dedicate my time to make this and that? Or do I also have the discipline to save up for capital and equipment if you're up to it? Or, or save up capital to ask your manufacturers to make merchandise for you. And other than that, what else could I give? Um, well, it's kind of contradicting to what I just said. I mean, don't go in blindly. But at the same time, don't hesitate. Because there's this sweet spot between hesitation and just going for it. You just have to find it because it varies per person. Like uh, what would work for someone may not work for another artist. So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. That was like a weird ending to my answer. But yeah, I think I get what you're trying to say. Like you have to take the risk, but also you have to inspect the field first like if you can avoid yeah. something then avoid it but you know if it's okay and you're willing to take that go ahead and take it just don't if like the mistakes are right there in front of you like don't go ahead and pursue it right so yeah that that is you know what you're trying to say what i yes. understood from what you're trying yes, to say more or less because goldfish memory, I tend to forget what I was supposed to say. So it just went out the window. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah that's okay, honestly. I relate to those moments. So Quaint asks, where do you see yourself in the following years as an artist? Uh, uh, it may be a long shot, but I would like to pursue art full time. Be, uh, but uh, that will probably that probably will take a few years more because uh, you know you have to build up your brand, and yeah. it's uh, honestly hard to like just jump in into art full time when you have a lot of bills, uh, bills to pay. So you just have to weigh the consequences before deciding what path you have to pursue. But uh, yeah, in the next few years, uh, that's what I intend to do. But right now, not yet. Uh, it's kind of funny because I have, I still have a lot of bills, plus adulting, plus the fountain pens. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, a lot. It's like a lot. Yes. So creative fat unicorn asks, what's the story behind your artist name Hoshi Chino? Oh, see, kidding. Um. Uh, Hoshi Chino is um, uh, what do you call this? Uh, a combi combination. Uh, Hoshi mm -hmm. was uh, actually one of my screen screen names in Ragnarok Online back then, and she was my favorite character. I mean, out of all my characters in Ragnarok, she was my favorite, and uh, the Chino in the name actually comes from Cappuccino. Because I cannot function without coffee. So, yeah. yeah. Hoshi Chino is uh, more or less the combination of my Ragnarok online name. Which also sounds like Hoshi in Japanese. Which is the Japanese of um, star. And it's Ooh. also a nod to, well, my favorite Genshin character, Kaya. Because of his star-shaped pupil. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, star and coffee that's why i put out my brand as um uh, art stars and coffee because that's what i intend my name to be so yeah yeah actually mia commented here and also because she's a coffee addict four cups a day <laughs> is that Both true of you to assume it's four cups it's five <laughs> <laughs> It's five or more, de depending on it's on. It's ten. Not not. Re I I haven't reached ten yet. I think, I think the maximum I've reached in a day was seven, but usually Ooh. it's just four to five, because I still want to sleep 
especially if I have work the next day. Yeah. But you know, at seven, it's like your blood is already capping. Yes. <laughs> so I think it's uh, like is... your two favorite things. Yes, mm-hmm. uh, I really cannot function without coffee, which is also funny because I'm cosplaying Arlan and he also has a voice line about coffee. <laughs> it like it really works for you, honestly. <laughs> funny, it's th- funny how, you know, things just work out for you. So yeah. Einman here uh, asks, what's your art setup right now? Are you traditional? Are you digital? Like, what are your go-to tools? Uh, right now, I focus on traditional art. Um, I use a uh, pencil, uh, what do you call that? Kuru Toga for sketching. Mm-hmm. And then I use uh, Copic Multiliners for line art. Although there were a few times in the past that I used deep pens, but uh, I figured that the liners work better for me. So for line art, I use that. And then I color with Copic markers and a little bit of um, Prisma colored pencils. Uh, I also know how to do digital, but I only use digital nowadays if I have a deadline to, to meet. Like, uh, there was this Genshin Impact sticker collab for the art, I I mean, for the Craft Central. And I only had, like, a week to finish the sticker sheet that I I have to contribute. So, I used digital for that one. Um, Mm -hmm. I did the the line art. I mean, I did the sketching and the line art uh, via digital. And then I printed it out and I colored it with Copics and I scanned it. And then I extracted the images so they could be, you know, um, transpa- they, they could have transparent backgrounds. And then I submitted it to Craft Central and I made it, I, I made the, de- the deadline. Like I, yeah. I wasn't short of time. So yeah, I usually use digital only for rush thingies. Yeah. For rushed works, it's digital, guys. Yes. <laughs> so, what's the most challenging part of the process? Ainman asks. Challenging part of the process of uh, art in general, or just making merch? Wait. Let me. Uh, let's ask Ainman. Is it art in general, or you know, yeah. doing the art merch business? So let's wait a little bit. Let, let me just read some of the comments here. So Ainman says, I want to stop procrastinating too. I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll do it tomorrow. And then the next day. So Jennifer says, I work at Starbucks part-time. Ooh, can we have a discount? <laughs> Sorry. And Yuri says, thank you, Anjali, and fighting and yeah momoka says arlen needs more coffee <laughs> it's so character. amen you know uh commented both so you know uh what's uh what's the most challenging part for your art as well as the most challenging part for your art merch business Honestly, the challenge is my day job, but I need money. <laughs> well, uh, the challenge uh, mainly is uh, when you get that drawing mood at work. Because you cannot really draw at work. Uh, especially if there's the high chance that your bosses will see you. Uh, the mm-hmm. challenge for me, although I face that challenge by... I'm writing down my ideas. Like if I get the urge to draw something for a sticker and I yeah. and I was and I am at work, I'll just list yeah. it down in my handy dandy notebook with my handy dandy fountain pen and I will get back to it at a later time when I yeah. when I have time to draw or when I am able to make time to draw. Yeah. Uh, for the business aspect, uh I think the challenge is, you know, doing everything by yourself because you have to make art at the same time you have to fix your art so it could be presentable as merch 
and it's also challenging to like uh, you know doing doing the cutting the packaging the putting of the barcodes and everything you yeah. just really have to set aside time but at the same mm -hmm. time don't forget to rest don't be yeah. like me who who packs uh, who packs merch like until 2 a.m <laughs> and then oh. waking up for work like 5 to 6 a.m so oh, yeah oh my god yeah, that's why I really need coffee at times because uh, if I dedicate my time to merch making, uh, yeah, I lack sleep. So, yeah. You have to have that energy to go through the day, honestly. Yes. Honestly, just three hours of sleep. Like, that's, <laughs> wow. That's that's why you need the seven cups of coffee. Like, I understand yes. <laughs> yeah that's why although i don't do that every day because uh aside from art i also have to catch up with some of my quote unquote genshin backlogs so mm -hmm. i also use that time to you know just chill and relax and then do art at another time so i don't get fed up with one hobby and another so yeah i just try to alternate them in a sense like for this weekday night i will be working on merch for the uh, next weekday night i'll be playing genshin the other weekday night i'll be playing star rail mm -hmm. yeah so there is a last question here from creative fat unicorn um how do you overcome art block and how do you manage to balance working in the day and doing art at night uh, for art block, um, usually I just try to, number one, uh, probably the most important aspect for me, uh, get some nice music or rather listen to some nice music. And there are some songs that uh, will trigger this um, idea in you. If you, if you, you know, uh, what's the term? If you happen to stumble upon the right song, it will definitely spark some idea in you which would help you get out of art block and as for managing to balance working in the day and doing art at night uh i think it's a common quote, quote like some people say work hard and play harder i don't know yeah. if that applies but uh, that's usually what i try to keep in mind when i am quote unquote suffering in my day job so yeah, yeah. it's uh it's uh it's just really um more or less a question of um dedication and time management you just have to find a balance of both because uh as much as i would like to note i i mean i mean i as much as i would like to take you know a week long vacation leave so i could just make art uh, it's kind of hard to do so so yeah. yeah we just have to okay that sounded morbid we just have to suffer in our day jobs but <laughs> no uh yeah. we just we just have to do our best in our day jobs and uh, at the same time when we're done with work for the day we should also consider like uh, art is my solace or art is my uh, rest from from today's work so i should also enjoy this or rather relish in the moment of making art if that makes yeah. sense yeah yeah it's just so good to hear that actually for me as well you know art becomes like my method of relaxation when i'm just too stressed with life like yes. with work or with you know with some um, relationships or <laughs> some other things in my life so you know when you start sketching and formulating your ideas like some of the pain some of the anxiety or some of the stress kind of goes away per you know per stroke of the yes per stroke of pen. your fan yeah it also yeah. helps a lot yeah so creative fat says thank you angeli congrats thank again you. thank you so, so much yeah you're welcome, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you guys have any more questions for Angelie? 
because after you know a little while i'll be asking my final question as well to angeli so go ahead and take this opportunity to comment any more questions that you have so says, ask arlan yes <laughs> So many, so many hashtags, so many. <laughs> oh, Wesley asks, current favorite fountain pen color. So what's your current favorite fountain pen color? Uh, actually, my favorite uh, my favorite color is violet. I mean, uh, usually people say purple, but I lean towards the violet because it leans towards blue. Uh, for mm -hmm. my fountain pen, actually, it's kind of contradicting because... Right now, I have, I think I have more uh, blue shaded fountain pens rather than purple ones. Because purple ones are actually hard to find. Like that perfect shade of, of violet rather. That, yeah. <laughs> like I find it difficult to find that quote unquote perfect violet pen. So usually I end, end up getting blue ones. Which is yeah. kind of near to the color theme of Kaya. Yeah. So, for Mafuyu, you know, what's your most favorite style when drawing? Favorite style? Um, uh, probably anime. Although, I've been trying to change a bit of my st style lately following Genshin Impact. Because, um... Uh, I used to work with only black lines, but mm -hmm. lately I have been experimenting by using colored lines. Like for example, um, for Kaya, uh, I use um black blue. I use blue lines for his hair, and then um brown lines for his skin, and a mix of colors depending on the details for his outfit. It's either blue or gray or black. Mm -hmm. yeah so let me see if there there's more questions yeah i don't think there are any oh wait <laughs> one more question from holy ayman grail. what is what is your holy grail or art goal art goal of my uh my art goal is uh probably also a challenge to myself I would like to be able to create an illustration that involves multiple color characters in one full drawing. Much like yeah. the promo materials for Genshin, like the recent one for uh, the new nation, Fontaine, yeah. wherein they yeah. have like, looks at wallpaper. They have a few characters on the artwork. So that is also mm -hmm. one of my main goals because uh, I figure that it will be kind of difficult to do that traditionally because uh, for digital, you can just create one character and then just put it beside another character, even if they're two totally different sketches. So, yeah, that's a, tra that's yeah. a challenge for traditional. I, I want to put a lot of characters in one full A4 sheet. So that's my goal for now. Yeah. Okay, so do you guys have any more questions for Anjali or can I ask my own question as well? The final one, you know, the most important one Ooh. to ask. Yeah. Let me just, uh, let's just wait a little bit for, you know, some of the people because I know that, you know, YouTube could be a little bit hangy sometimes okay so there is something here so pon Mary says i just want to say to Anjali that being your classmate really inspires me oh on my <laughs> that's so adorable <laughs> inspires me on my own art journey good luck on all your plans and goals i hope we can share a table at a convention someday yes please Yay, oh, table so sharing. Oh my god. Is she your classmate? Is Pan Marie your class? Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, she is your classmate. Yes. 
so cool. So sweet, honestly. This is what I love about this community. Like, everybody supports everybody. And, you know, when you're achieving something instead of, like, um, getting jealous or getting envious, they, they just really support you and they, you know, share your share your successes. Yeah. Like, the uh, classmates of Anjali who really, you know, shared this interview as well as reacted a lot of heart emojis you know when the event was posted <laughs> so yeah Please, thank you it's for so your sweet. support heart heart kuru kuru heart, kuru. Heart, kuru 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 <laughs> so Ainmin Rex said really encouraged by Angelie's journey yeah honestly I am too very much so very much so right now, like 10 times more. And Liang says, yeah, go classmate. Yeah. Yay. Thank you. Okay. So Gen V, uh, let's just read this one comment from Gen V. Just wanting to say hi to my classmate who's featured right now. Showing my support classmate. Best of luck. I, I Actually, thank you. Uh, just, a, just a quick uh, tidbit. Um, Gen V was one of the people who like shared the interviews like I think a day before or just a while ago and you know she's also one of the classmates of Anjali so yeah very very lovey dovey and we supportive. actually recently saw each other along with some other classmates um, wherein we joined an, a seminar for Artist Ali which uh, we in, uh, we're in, we intend to use our learnings for our next convention tables, hopefully. Mm -hmm. So yeah, shout out to the people I were with. Uh, I, I, it was last Sunday, like August 20. So we uh, did a little, little bit of hangout and then we attended, mm -hmm. attended the seminar. So shout out to Gen V, to Miming, and to Mane. It was a very nice Sunday with you three. So, yeah. Yeah. So, shout out to you guys. And Momoka says, thank you for the art inspiration. And Yuri says, Anjali, kahit 160 na yung resin ko, andito ako for you. <laughs> Yay! Ubusin natin yung resin mo mamaya. Puno na rin resin ko eh. <laughs> thank you for your support, everybody. Okay. So I think, you know, are there any more questions or should I go with, you know, our very last question for Anjali? So Genvi says, oh, so sweet. Enjoyed my time too. It was a pleasure spending time with you. Oh, so fluffy feelings. Fluffy feelings. That's like, you know, the, I can't really translate kilig, but it's like yeah. this good feeling that you get when you're getting a lot of support it's like it's like this <laughs> yeah so kind of send out some heart emojis as well so i think you know there's no more questions coming from my comment section already so let me just ask this last question to angeli so Angeli, what's your advice for uh, two fellow aspiring anime and manga artists who want to level up their art and, you know, also who want to follow their art dreams? Uh, what I would like to say, it's never too late to pursue yeah. your dreams, regardless of your age. I mean, as they say, once an artist, always an artist. Like... You don't have to be making art every day so you could be called a quote-unquote artist so yeah uh, as long as you keep the fire burning Nox, may ganun. Um, as long as you keep the fire burning uh, yeah. you will you you will be able to well make things happen and mm -hmm. even if uh, life is pretty much busy because I think a lot of us have been busy as for for you know school or work or just life in general uh yeah. art will always be there art will always be there in your heart <laughs> oh my god i feel so cringe saying that but yeah uh art will always be there so never give up 
and if uh, if uh, circumstances will you know be favorable to you there will be there will definitely be a chance just that uh, you just have to be patient because uh, everybody's art journey is different so don't suffer from comparing your art journey with another because uh, as they say in social media most of the people just post the good things they don't know the struggles behind it so don't compare yourself to someone who is what we call successful because you can't i mean you you may not know what is behind that success so long story short just keep kururuing but yeah yes. art will always be there so ayan. just keep kururuing guys let let me see it in the comment section. Kuro, kuro, kuro. <laughs> yeah. So thank you so much, Anjali, for thank you know you. joining us in this interview, for sharing your story, for you sharing your words of wisdom and your seven cups of coffee. <laughs> and yes. uh, to everyone else who also joined us and asked their questions, thank you too. Anjali, thank you. you truly are an inspiration to a lot of aspiring artists right now and yeah um for now i actually have a question or not a question i would just actually want to share this thing as well to you guys so you know angeli is one of the students in our anime and manga character drawing course if you didn't know already and if you guys you know want to experience the experiences that Anjali, you know, went through or, you know, the art progress that you see, you know, in our previous slides, in her artworks, let me reveal the secret right now on how you can improve your art like Anjali and essentially, you know, be able to make art that you can make a living out of. So the thing is, here at Learn to Draw Manga, we have an anime and manga character drawing course. And in this anime and manga character drawing course, we just really want to empower and encourage and motivate more aspiring anime and manga artists. You know, we don't want you guys to feel, you know, we don't want you guys to feel stuck, you know, feel insecure or like have a he um have you know prolonged hiatuses on your art we want you to feel confident we want you to feel proud of your original artworks and your original illustrations and if you're asking you know, are you really legit well i'm gonna tell you right now that yes we are legit because we've been working with over 200 200 plus students already through our anime and manga character drawing course for almost two years so yeah and the best thing or the best part of our course is actually other other than the community that as you can see in our live right now is very very supportive of each other it's also the mentors so if you want to um here's a tidbit actually on our mentors in our anime and manga character drawing course so as you can see on your screen one of the mentors is miss now yazawa so if you if you don't know yet miss now yazawa is actually the author the mangaka of the famous 90s um anime and manga wedding peach and not only um did she create something so iconic but also she made and published her own manga drawing deluxe book and she's also um a teacher in a manga drawing school as well and you know she's made a lot of um a lot of graphic novels a lot of mangas and honestly she's she really knows her thing guys so this is one of our mentors who are actual, you know, Japanese, Jap uh, pro Japanese anime and manga artists. So yeah, and then another one of our mentors is actually mentor Steph. 
So as you can see on your screen, these are some of his artworks. So he's very good in, you know, very dynamic poses on proportions as well as um, perspective. So she's also an expert in shonen type of manga. As you can see, you know, there's Demon Slayer and there's Attack on Titan. And, you know, he's been... Um, making a living out of his artworks you know out of commissions for for a number of years already and he's been partner with learn to draw manga as well as artillery for many years as well and then of course the last but not the least the mentor that i'm showing you right now is actually renaissance or Renasaya. So she has been a mangaka for 20 years already. And not only does she teach in a manga school in Tokyo, Japan, but also she has published her own How to Draw Manga book. And she also, like Yazawa Sensei, she also teaches in a manga school. So I don't know about you guys, but you know, these people are totally awesome and the credentials, you know, speak for themselves. And, you know, the artworks that I'm showing you in the screens like this one and this one from Yazawa Sensei really does, you know, prove that they know what they're doing and they're the best at what they're doing. So now how about the course that, you know, we're offering? So... The course is actually lifetime access. So what does that mean? So basically, you can access uh, the step-by-step -step learn how to draw manga videos, the lessons, and the weekly critiquing sessions with the mentors for life. And what will you learn in this um, in this uh, lessons as well? Basically, you'll learn about drawing foundations, how to draw with dip pens, and how to color with Copic markers. So yeah. That is our anime and manga character drawing course. And if you'd like to learn how to be a part of this amazing, very amazing Kuro Kuro community, then you can book a consultation call with us. So again, the link for the consultation call is in our comment section. It's in the pinned comment. So go ahead and click that if you want to learn how to experience the things that Anjali has experienced, how to improve your hour, how to um, take that first step to actually progressing your progressing with your art despite the number of years that you haven't been practicing or despite the setbacks and you know the discouragements that you have heard. So yeah. Go ahead and click the link guys and this is a very you know important question to ask you. What will you be tomorrow if you start today? So go ahead, guys. Take the leap. Take the kuro, kuro Take the risk. Because if you don't take the risk, you'll honestly, you won't actually able, you won't be able to achieve the things that you want or the success that you really want in life. So yeah. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and ask it in the comment section. So let me just put in Anjali again for the last part. So guys, go ahead and ask your questions because we're almost ending the live stream. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do it. Koro, Koro. <laughs> go ahead and ask Arlen. <laughs> ask Arlen about your future. Just kidding. <laughs> so yeah let's just wait for a bit and you know actually guys okay Amen asks what is your message to your younger artist self <laughs> oh my gosh uh probably i'll tell my younger self like uh just keep drawing even if you won't be in an art course because you will get to create your art into merch eventually in the future because 
it actually happened. Like I was able to create, I I was able to make my old art into a button pin. So yeah. So that's you know, that's a good message to say to your younger self. Honestly, I feel like if your younger self could see you right now, she'll also be very proud. Like that's what I look like right now. I look so suave with my white wig. <laughs> Okay. Probably my younger self will be like, "Oh my God, you're cosplaying and making art. That's so awesome!" Like that's what I've always dreamed of, and you're finally achieving it. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's see the comments. Any more things to add, guys? Any more things to add? Okay. Yeah. Swiping with the song right now because we're waiting. <laughs> Just kururuing with the song. Kuru kururuing. Okay. So I think, you know, there aren't any more questions. There aren't any more, um, in like, any more things that people want to know more about us. So I'm going to take this opportunity to actually thank you guys for joining us in our uh, live interview. And again, thank you, Anjali, for sharing your thank story. You. And I do hope that a lot of you are motivated to, you know, follow your dreams, follow your art dreams and take this step. Be brave enough to, you know, um, uh, like pursue the things that you love despite every any discouragements coming from other people. Yes, so with that um, said, <laughs> yes. Okay, go ahead. Uh, uh, just a little bit to add. Um, always remember that even if it's just a baby step, it's still a step forward. So don't uh, don't be too harsh on yourself. Just uh, do your best, and yeah, God will do the rest. <laughs> uh but yeah uh ju just uh just move forward because uh like even if it's just one step that's already one step towards uh the goals that you have in mind oh so, yeah yeah do your best and god will do the rest amen kuru, kuru, kuru. <laughs> kuru, kuru. <laughs> okay so thank you guys We'll be ending it here right now, and I'll be showing you a very uh, beautiful artwork here. Ah, uh, here we go. This is oh, one of is you know, yeah. It was yeah. the uh, Sino artwork that Sarah was referring uh, to earlier. Ah, that's the orange one. Yes, the, the orange other. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks great. The armor looks great, and I act like the half face is also you know very very handsome. So Katie says. Thank you. Jen B says thank you. And Eamon says thank you, Patricia and Angeli. So thank you guys for joining us in our live stream today. Hope to see you in our next live streams. And also I hope that you, you know, you're able to pursue more of your dreams and be able to succeed in your goals as well. Thank you guys. Have thank a nice you. day. Good Thank night. You. Heart, heart, heart. Kuro, 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 kuro. <laughs> Bye, guys.